Well, here we have a break made by Matthew Bolton, the very strong Australian player, who's certainly a very realistic contender for the World Championship, either this year or in the future. He is accustomed to making big breaks as well, frequently making five, six hundreds in big tournaments. So he's up against it here, though, against the best player. I would venture to suggest the best player for 80 years. Since the great days of Lim, Lindrum, Smith, Newman, etc., Davis, and so on. Mike Russell. Mike, who's made many thousand breaks, and I believe a 2,000 break, I'm not sure of the number, but uh, a prolific scorer, uh, and has had, back in 2010, a thousand break, in fact, eleven hundred and thirty-seven in the world, the IBSF World Championships in India. In the final, playing Peter Gilchrist. So that's the time to do it. Matthew will. He looks like he's uh, games in good shape. He's at the top here and uh, he's a very, very good top of the table player. And he certainly will ask the question of Mike if he gets uh, a few openings and gets going, as he indeed seems to be doing so here. part of this um, the commentary on this recording <coughs> was done in 2015 and unfortunately the referee you see there Michael Wright one of Billy's characters he uh, is a tremendous enthusiast both as a player and as a referee we sadly lost him just over a year ago, between a year and two years ago. <coughs> a very sad thing. And it's, it's difficult to watch, actually. However, the game goes on. Matthew looking quite assured here. He settled down and playing very nicely. He plays a similar sort of game to Mike in as much as it's his scoring is dominated by a top of the table play. As is the case with all the top players these days. Unfortunately, we don't see too much all round play, but uh, there it is. It's a great skill, though, in its own right. And um, players that don't play it, usually it's because. They're not such good potters and they miss the pot too often. And so keep playing cannons and keeping the white near the spot. Ideally, just behind it and just to one side or the other. 
it's very, very difficult to do, and you do need to be in very, very good touch in controlling the pace, like that shot there. He's got to get the pace right, and he's actually overdone it a little bit, so he's got a bit of work to do here. <clears throat> Lots of side and drag on the cue ball. Didn't quite get underneath the white. Now, can he run through, bringing the white back towards the centre line, and push the red towards the pocket, and he does it. Must keep that white in the centre of the table. Now he'll be trying to gain a position in order to play a white to red cannon. He's just had a look there, you see just to see where he wants to be. Now this isn't a natural shot, he's going to have to probably stun it a fraction. Yep. <coughs> now he's got it just right for this thick half ball run through. Bringing them together. Wanted the white to come a bit further but Go to work with a few cannons now. <laughs> it's quite nice. He can play another one here. <clears throat> the pot wouldn't be the right shot here because he's leaving the white in a poor position. So. Now he's played, that's a lovely shot. He's played to get the past the red so that he can play red cushion white. This will move the white back towards the spot. <coughs> now, if this is straight, he could risk screwing back or play 369, depending on how he feels. And it's the latter. Good play though. Sound billiards. <laughs> this will be another in off in the middle pocket. Here, the referee. I'm wondering whether we've whether we scored 80 now, and we've had the ball blind ruling. We'll see what he does with this. Well, that looks like uh, ball blind crossing to me. get past the yellow. He might have to play a yellow cushion red. We'll see. Yes. Okay. Little bit off here, I would think. Just checking how far the red is from the cushion. He doesn't want to double kiss. it out now from the camera position I can't see the angle on this but he may be forced to pop this now this is missable a good pot these are tight pockets remember they're not so uh, not certainly not club pockets that they're, they're tight pockets and uh, you've got to be right That was well played.
It's one of those shots, like that previous cannon, if you're a little bit tight, <coughs> it's very, very easy to quit on the shot or, or over hit. Just getting out, out of sync with the referee there. Some players like the referee to walk in front of them to the pocket while they walk around the back. Others like to walk in front of the referee. That delays the referee though. Meaning you get to your position and the ball's not there. So it's all personal preference. Referees have to pick up that sort of thing and get the feel early on of what a player wants. They should try to help the player, not hinder them. See there, a lovely position he is over the queue, dead straight. The very fine queuist, very dangerous player. to really flow now it's uh, he speeded up a little not that he was slow before but he noticed um, well now he's as soon as I said that he's taking his time but he's actually more sure of himself and uh, getting in the right position so he doesn't have to think too much billiards is all about position good billiards anyway controlling the balls to leave an easy shot and not going down those blind alleys that lead into trouble. And experience tells you what is the right shot and what shots are leading into trouble. Trouble where two or three shots down the line you finish up out of position. So it's a game of knowledge as much as skill. There, that cannon was uh, just a little wide. He's had to come away here, in off the red. <coughs> Sending it nicely up into the prime area where we can go in off or pot it perfect pace with the pot This match is the semi-final of the World Championship 2012. We're playing in Leeds at the Northern Snooker Centre, owned and run by Jim Williamson's two sons, Ian and Chris. Jim Williamson, did I say Ian Williamson? Ian Williamson is Jim Williamson's son. Ah, he's out of position. Okay. One slip and although the balls are close together, this is tricky. He may be able to sneak in off the red, I I'm not sure. What he's, that's what he's looking at. This is tricky. He's got to play it slowly to um, 
just keep the red in nice position and that's a lovely shot good shot near the pocket just catch the side cushion drop on the top knuckle would have been nice but uh, now he's got to, got to improvise there probably playing a screw cannon yeah this looks good we've just caught the knuckle there <laughs> That's um, got him out of trouble. So he deserves a bit of good fortune. He's playing well. And uh, that red could so easily have slipped up the side cushion a little bit and been out of play. And he would have had a tricky shot on the right. But as it is, He's got to recover the white though, the white's not where he wants it. And there he is, straight away, look. Round the back of the white, out the other side to leave the cannon. And this looks about right. And there he is, back in prime position. It's all about where the object white is in billiards and especially top of the table. Now he'll be trying now to manipulate the balls so that he can play another cannon from white to red. And this might be it. There we are. And he gets the white back where he wants it. been the ball line warning uh ball line ball again not sure because we can't hear the score but we know the break goes to two six four so we're not that worried how many it is pot here let the cue ball come back to his side of the table much better than trying to hold it finishing up in the middle of the table with no shot now you see he's played the cannon he's knocked the white out of position a bit so straight away We'll see whether it, there we are. Um, he's left the cannon a little bit wide, perhaps. Yeah, he's managed it though. This side, lots of left hand side on that to turn the red to the right, and he's back perfect. All about the object wide. The white doesn't have to be behind the spot. It can be, as Norman Dagley used to say, he used to imagine a penalty area. If you imagine the billiard table as a football pitch and the, the red spot, these spots as we call it, is the penalty spot. Anywhere within the penalty area, in other words, a foot or so either side of the spot, and you've got about 18 inches from the top cushion to the other side of the spot 
anywhere in that area you can recover it so keep playing cannons and don't try to be too precise unless your name's Mike Russell who we'll see shortly where his penalty area is about four inches square <laughs> placed at much finer margins than anybody else Stop playing. so there we have an interval in the match but we'll continue straight away of the red there, the referee. is going to have to be at his best in this match and we'll see that shortly after this and we see Mike make a break of 740 by this same method Matthew is um, in Australia in a class of his own. There's nobody else at the moment, I don't think, in Australia that uh, can challenge him. They've got a few good players, mind you. And a player of the past from Australia, Robbie Folvari, was um, he was world champion a few times about 20 years ago. Very um, thoughtful and considered player, I would say. Um, rather on the pedestrian side. Now, this cannon here, he could try and flick across the right hand edge of this red. And he did, oh dear, he hasn't gone far enough. He did try that to skim the edge of the red, but the angle wasn't quite there. Uh, it would have put him in lovely position had he just got red a bit thinner. But as it is, tricky shot with the rest. Ah, and I think he miscued there. So that's the end of a very nice break. Well done. <laughs>